Hello my friends on YouTube. Today is I believe the 4th. Today is Sunday the 4th of September 2022. Today's video's title is Marlin Monroe and Islam. The reason Marlin Monroe came to my mind when I decided to speak about this uh, video is it's actually about um, the Uyghur the minority Muslim in China and the United Nations is calling on China to stop a, a committing atrocity and, and uh, doing bad or, or how do you say like committing atrocity against the the Muslims in in China serious violation you could say against these people although I don't believe in Islam I don't believe in Muhammad was a prophet I don't believe in any of that however I believe people should be free and if you want to worship uh, Muhammad, if you want to believe he was a prophet, if you want to believe he's God, it's your business. And you should be free to believe that. Okay? However, similar to the Islamic practice, unfortunately, the communist practice is, is very much the same. Everybody has to follow the leader everybody has to follow the caliph. so China does not believe in any religion the religion they believe in is to worship the leader well it's the same in Muslim Brotherhood I mean the caliph was or the top leader whether regardless who who he may be this is the one that you obey and follow even if he beats you that's in, in hadith even if he beats your back and take your money you have to say okay sir yes sir and practically this what communist ideology whether it was the former soviet union or currently china doing with actually there is a, a few jewish people in china so whether you are Jewish, Christian, or Buddhist, uh, or uh, Muslim, you are equally treated the same. You are worthless, worthless, and you should be persecuted all the time. I don't believe in that. I don't agree with that. However, this is what's happening. Marlene Monroe said, uh, if you are... Uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna do if you're gonna be two-faced at least make one of them pretty that is a famous quote from Marlene Monroe and often time I must admit sometimes the Muslim Brotherhood their faces it's either ugly all the time or sometimes also they make one side pretty I trust the Salafi movement in who this is a different movement that it off sh it's off shooting from the Muslim Brotherhood they call themselves Salafi the Salafi movement in Islam I will trust them more and the reason is they are more honest they go straight forward and they tell you yes we are terrorists our book in our teaching our teaching tell us to terrorize people here it's in the Quran it's in the book so they really don't lie and a person like that I trust because he's not going around he's not beating around the bushes so clearly I can identify him and his belief whatever this is whether it's good or bad then I know how to act the problem is those 
the hypocrites, the hypocrites. And w when I researched the Quran for hypocrisy, there is a whole chapter in Quran about hypocrisy and hip hypocritical people. And I'm going to explain that hypocrisy, it was very necessary to many people in the beginning of Islam. Let me explain. When the founder of this ideology left his birthplace, Mecca, went to Medina, he was kicked out. They didn't kill him. He was kicked out. They were sick of him because he was insulting them, insulting their belief, insulting their faith, insulting everything. And he had no respect for any of them uh, unless they follow him. And to follow you, yeah, I have to make a, a decision myself. You should not force me to follow you. I have to see something good in you first. And if they couldn't see something good in him, then you sh it shouldn't be by force. Otherwise, you are forcing them to be hypocrites. And this is what happened. Okay, so they kicked him out. He went, he built, he went to Medina, he built an army, he came back attacking them with a huge army. And this was the moment that many of them said to themselves, we have to follow this guy, unfortunately, because at this moment, it's either submit, capitulate, or we will be killed, the men will be killed, the women will be raped by him and his army. So in a way it was a compromise. They knew they had no chance to fight him physically and win. He became militarily very big, too big to handle. So because of that, They accepted his whatever teaching he, he was teaching. And they had to say, yes, this is wonderful. This is the best teaching that ever came to humanity. Under the fear of the sword to come down on their necks. That was a group of people. The other group were those who had some um, business with him. They didn't like him really very much, but hey, we go out invading together. I come back. I was very poor, but I come back now. I have some money that I looted, and I have few women and few slaves that I can have them do my work, whatever type of work I have to do then I rest these slaves can work for me however in terms of faith and belief there was none practically and Muhammad knew that that those people are there for money and some there they were there with him saying yes sir out of fear that they may be killed and their wives and their children taken as sex slaves. Uh, as I said, there were many, uh, there were many uh, people who accepted that, and Muhammad knew. So I'm going to read one of these uh, verses. It is, uh, it's taken not from. Uh, the hy hypocritical people uh, chapter but from Anisa, which means the women so much about women huh? okay uh, it is uh, I'm going to put it in the description box and um, it is uh, 491 in the Quran you will find others who wish to be saved from you that's supposed to be the God of uh, the founder of Islam talking to him talking to the founder telling him you will find others 
others who wish to be safe from you. What does it mean, safe from you? Afraid of you. Afraid of what? That you may chop their head off. They are afraid of you, so they are just saying yes, sir, verbally, but their heart is in a different area. Okay. And their own, safe from you, and their own people. Because some of the people, let's say I'm against this guy, but I have no, I cannot fight him, I cannot run away, I cannot do anything by myself. So I have to sw swallow my pain and accept whatever he says. Some, if some of my family members give in to that because let's say some young kids are lustful and they go out, they invade, they come back with women and they're having a lot of sex. Hey, you're my boss, Mr. Uh, uh, new founder. That's a good religion. I'm, I'm in. Count me in. So he can tell who is in, who is wavering and just pushing himself to accept this so if part of my family members my brothers or let's say my son got involved with this guy and he likes the free money coming easy money and this the, the unlimited sex with unlimited number of women always going out getting women and having sex my brother or my son or my whoever may tell me get lost this guy i love this guy more than you he's giving me a lot so some people were actually in a dilemma they can trust their own family members now and they cannot trust this guy and they can be killed by either one so you have to understand that they were walking a very fine line because they can get killed at any moment. Let's finish that verse. Okay, from beginning. You will find others who wish to be safe from you and their own people. Yet, they cannot resist the temptation of disbelief or hostility. It's very clear, these people, their heart was not with the founder of Islam. They cannot resist. They wish they had some physical strength to fight and tell him, get out of here. Okay? If they don't, then his Allah or whatever this is, if they do not keep away, offer their peace offer you peace i'm sorry offer you peace they have to come and submit capitulate and offer you peace huh or refrain from attacking you that means they were waiting for a chance to either slaughter him kill him poison him what have you he knew that huh refrain from attacking you then seize them and kill them. See what they were afraid of? At any moment, he can seize them and kill them. Wherever you find them, we have given them full permission over such people. So you have full permission to do whatever you want with these people. Because they are not really following obediently. So when you see that, you understand, from the beginning, when you, when you push people to believe in a religion, let's say there is a, an atheist person here, and I have weapon, and I force him to say, I am the ultimate 
prophet or I am God. Okay, I am God. And this guy is atheist. This man or this woman is an atheist. Or Buddhist or Christian or what have you. And I force him to submit to me and say, There is no Allah but Muhammad Ayat. I am the Allah here now. If I do force him to do that, maybe out of fear and to preserve his life, he might say, yes, I accept you as the prophet of Allah. But deep in his heart, you are a, a most evil person. Unless you are teaching something good and people automatically drawn to you not by sword drawn to you because if you have something good everyone will be attracted to you you don't force them by sword to come to you so hypocrisy started from beginning from beginning huh? and today it took the United Nation, if we say there is one approximate, there is about 8 billion people on earth, and there's one and a half billion Muslim, there's uh, six and a half billion other religions. So it took the United Nations, which is majority non-Muslim, to speak for the Uyghur, the Muslim Uyghur. Now tell me how many Muslim countries, how many Muslim countries spoke for the sake of the Uyghur? There are many. Saudi Arabia? No. Turkey? No. Egypt? No. Indonesia? No. Uh, uh, Morocco, uh, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, Sudan, any of these Muslim nations? No. Any of the Gulf region, uh, uh, United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Dubai, Oman, Bahrain, no. Why? There's nothing really coming out of them. No, nothing useful. Uh, is there a problem? Yeah. So, Apparently, the United Nations has more heart and feeling towards these people who are persecuted or violated in China more than those who proclaim to be of the same faith. This is hypocrisy. So, there's two faces, as Marlene Monroe said. However, both of them ugly faces, in my opinion. The two faces are very ugly. Okay? They are not making one of the faces at least decent. Looks okay. No. However, there is one person who actually sometimes have an ugly face. Other times, good face. And that, uh, not to mention names, I mentioned his name in the last uh, the, the last videos about him who is happy that somebody is speaking about the destruction of the West the decline of the West the Christian countries are going to decline and then the Prophet of Allah will take over. We are going to conquer them and have their money and their uh, blonde women. Wow, that's a great uh, incentive here, guys. The young guys who love sex, get ready. The West is declining and you'll have endless sex with the blondies. Okay? So this guy, 
uh, who is hoping and reading things about the decline of the West and hoping that the West will decline when he speaks I heard him speaking when he speaks to European countries who is primarily Christian he has a face of how wonderful Christianity is and the Jews are our cousins and we love them they love us we eat the same food like them they eat kosher we eat halal it's the same it's just a different word and we can marry from them only our sons can marry their daughters but not the other way around so that the children can become Muslim Oh, we love the Christian and the Buddhist and we accept everybody and then when he goes to his den or even in the plane as he is leaving he does the prayer that God curse the Jews and the Christian and of course the Buddhist the Hindus the, and the rest this very ugly face we thank you very much and we hope to hear from you